Round two of the Prototype Toronto League Open Tournament. Uh, I'm Emily, and I'm here with... Sumit, hi. Thank you for joining us now for round two. Dreaded Spectre 1 on Twitch asks what the format is for our tournament. So the PTL Open is a unique tournament that is um, uh, an interesting format that we do. Players are encouraged to, but not forced to bring multiple lists. Any player who flies three separate lists at least once throughout our six-round Swiss tournament gets a free win. And then um, any any opponent, any player who flies each of their lists twice, so twice each list, gets a, uh, a specific prize. We encourage uh, people to fly uh, unique lists. So Kyle's watching uh, Rocking Wedge and Tillies, uh, which he's just he's got the same ability as he had in 1.0, arguably even more amazing in 2.0 because uh, there's there's no more auto thrusters, there's no more token stacking. So Wedge's ability to reduce your evade dice is huge. You're yeah. always rolling one less. And, and uh, as tokens being a premium in this game, it's pretty, pretty scary to see them. Um, you know, and the X-Wing has got some upgrades. It's got the hull upgrade built into it automatically from the uh, integrated astromech from 1.0. Uh, and um, it's got the barrel roll natively on the on the action bar now from before. Right. Uh, servo motor foils. Sorry, that's a mouthful <laughs> to say. Yeah, it is. S-foils. S-foils. Um, they give you the boost action if you open them, or so if you close them before you reveal your dial. So that's a cool thing. Luke is the wildly slippery, crazy, 91-point monster and definitely feels this less. Uh, so Supernatural Reflexes is a really, really big card that we're going to probably see stapled to a lot of high-initiative uh, Force users. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful Force ability. It, it allows you to spend a Force token before you activate for free action. Luke specifically is a Force monster because whenever he act, whenever he's the active defender, he regens a Force. Which is amazing. So, so Luke is the one of the only force users that you can spend force with impunity and um it makes him very tough to kill especially when you see him loaded up with r2d2 it's sabine is the one that i was a little bit iffy on i forgot what it is that she does so before you activate you may perform a barrel roll or boost action there you go yeah, so same action she had in the previous edition and on john's side it looks like he's running 2.0 version of Uncar Plutt's scrapyard it's jank to the nth degree <laughs> which is awesome and i'm hopefully john's going to show it to us as it goes um, so Zuckus's ability is, has remained the same yep. in 2.0, correct? Yep. So there you can see right there, while you perform a primary attack, you may roll additional attack die. If you do, the defender rolls. Now the new change, obviously, is the uh, what is the G1A is now a medium-based ship, so that'll be interesting to see oh, how that yeah. affects. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Previously, this version of this list was all four small-based ships, so it all kind of fit together in an interesting way. Um, the hired gun is an interesting, interesting build, as we see on there. These guys are all rocking a couple different trick shots. Uh, the veteran turret gunner is an interesting. Basically, the veteran turret gunner is uh, is gonna is I think the key for this setup. Uh, it's kind of like the way the old BTLA four title used to work, where you could fire from a turret. So oh, that's how right. This, yeah. He gets an additional. Yeah, as shot. long but the difference in this different mission, arcs, you, right? You got it. Yeah, in your turret arc versus your primary arc, and we haven't talked much about that because in the previous game it was all classic single arc. It only was ships, arc fighting. But it might come up in this one because um, John's running two mobile arc, well, rotational arc ships now. Right, because uh, Torkel Mux in the in the Hawk mm -hmm. also has the rotating arc. Mm -hmm. um, Torkel's ability, uh, I believe he you uh, picks a ship in his firing arc and knocks them down to PS zero. Oh, I think in combat. Okay, so it's been a while since I've seen it. So yeah, me too. <laughs> And then Uncar Plot is he has the same abilities he had in one but I, it might be like it's two point oh five sort of a thing. Now, the thing that's going to be interesting in this setup for me, is what I want to see, is the crew card that's on Torkoal, Tobias Beckett. That's a new card for 2.0. And that actually, after you've placed all of your uh, debris and objects and everything set up, the, you can then move one of the debris cards. Oh, right. Yeah, I so like this be... uh, moving <laughs> things around after. <laughs> yeah. So Kyle showing some love to some of the other amazing uh, factions that are out there in, uh, across Ontario. Uh, shouts out to Salt Squadron and GRX. Sorry, you were saying? Uh, I don't think I was saying. Oh, I was just saying that it's exciting that they've adjusted some of the rules so you move things after setups now, including placing things yeah. in different areas. It's very interesting. It adds a different level of uh, play to the game. Death Revive says expensive upgrade for a generic. Which one are you thinking of? Which upgrade is that you were talking about? Well, what I think the only generic there is the hired gun. Right. So he's thinking that the uh, the veteran turret gunner. That would be my guess. Would make sense. I can see what he's saying. Uh, vet turret. Yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying, um, but I think the idea of I think that's where his primary, 
I think that's where he wants his primary damage to come from. And the fact that now the, the Ion Turret can do one damage and one two Ions is, is impressive, and it gets four, four attack dice at range one. So the, the Ion Turret has become really, really good, and I've really enjoyed what they've done thus far with the turrets in this edition. There's only two turrets in the game currently. There's Ion and Dorsal. But um, I, you can see, I can see the case that you're trying to make that a 52-point Y-Wing might be a bit expensive, but... In one point oh terms, it's only really twenty six points, and that's exactly what. Yeah, if he makes all of his four ships similarly cost, mm -hmm. then you know none of them is the top target priority based just on points. Mm -hmm. And Ultrazine seventy seven uh, says he's really hoping to see Luke walked off the board. <laughs> that's the fear and power between tractor beams and uh, ion cannons. Right, we're that's... gonna see some shenanigans. Exactly. Actually, and exactly that, Ultrazine, possibly the best way to kill the unkillable. And this is where that matchup is going to be interesting because Torkoal can then take Luke and or, or Wedge and knock him down to PS0 for the combat, get all of his shots in, and PS kill him potentially before he has a chance to use his ability or his proton. Yeah, turns. it'll be interesting to see how he uses all of this jank. I'm exactly. Call it. Getting it all to function and execute on the same time could be the interesting thing. It looks like Kyle's decided to split up the forces and, and he's going to strafe and. Um, maybe punch in with Luke after the fact. We'll see how this works out. Again, he said he's never tried this list before. He just put it on the table for the first time, so he's going to have to feel it out on the fly a little bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure John said that this list, he played his in his first round as well, and he picked it for the stream because he's most comfortable with it. That's awesome. It looks like he's elected to put both of his turrets on his ship facing ship left. Shmayesh, that's an awesome name, but difficult for me to say. If it's weird, kill it, targeting priority. You're right. For Kyle, what does he target? Everything <laughs> in this list is weird, funky, and janky. That's why it's so awesome and interesting to see. It, what do you choose to fire? What What is the thing that is your biggest priority here? Because there's no one linchpin. I mean, the y, I think the Y-Wing, the hard gun, is a big, big problem. Zuckus is a big problem because he could potentially throw five dice at range one. Right. But Torkoal's a problem because he's going to nerf a lot of your ships. And then Uncar Plus the problem because he's got Tractor Beam. And Triple O is actually a really, really dangerous crew card because uh, Triple O can give you free, gives out stress. Right, okay. And if you don't choose to take that stress, then you um, you give him a free Calculate token, which is a soft focus. So there's actually a lot of modding and uh, ability stacking and cross-referencing going on in John's list. And it's going to be very interesting to see where it comes down. Uh, so McPoll13 is asking... Uh, after you have been ionized, you lose all of your ion tokens like in first edition. I believe you do. Correct. But to be ionized, you need one for small ship, two for medium, and three for large. Correct. And now they've changed that the ionization maneuver is a white maneuver and you can still take a focus action after it. Right. I believe. I might be or, wrong on that, but I think sorry, that's the change. You mean a blue maneuver? Blue maneuver. Yes. My apologies. There's no more green maneuvers. Yes. <clears throat> a relaxing blue. Yes. Which is an important change because being ionized and stressed was a huge issue. And that was one of the things that they were trying to reduce in this edition as well is that the fact you can't stress somebody and then keep them stressed forever. You can always take a focus if you're ionized. All right, John's ready to go. Got the thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing might be a little bit curious for us on stream is trying to keep track of the S-foils. Um, uh, looks like Kyle's using one of the new 2.0 X-Wings for Luke with his S-Foils closed. Um, but he's got a nice paint pre-painted wedge for ship one. So we'll see if we can get the board audio to let us know. I would assume that the S-Foils will stay closed until he absolutely needs to. Because you don't have to open them until you reveal your dial. Right. I think he was saying he had a token to <clears throat> designate it. Okay. If he's going to we'll, open we'll, them. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. I got to say, though, it's great to see a medium-based ship on the board. I love that change. That's one of my favorite changes in 2.0. It just feels right for a lot of the ships that they've moved into the medium base. I have not seen them in action yet, so I'm very excited to see how this works. Well, I did fly one Punisher, and it was interesting. It was it was very cool. It felt right for that ship. I don't know how else to explain it. I feel like it made sense because it was way too big for a small base. So with John's list, he wants to stay in some sort of formation, right? To get all of his tricks and everything to work well together. I feel like that's exactly the case. He wants everybody to kind of fire all at the same time. He wants you to be able to point at the front of his ship because he wants you to be able to... So he wants to be able to use the tractor beam to pull you into an arc and then torquil you down or vice versa. And then you're 
and then you're taking four dice at range three or range two even. It's it, it, I think that's what it is. I think the whole point is to bring it into range of the Y wing and then let Zuckus hammer home the damage. Right. And I think Kyle is probably going to try to pincer the Luke on the outside. Selecting a bump with his wedge to keep the slow, slower formation making, forcing John to kind of show him more about how he wants to move before he decides what he wants to do. Um, now, did John end up using the Tobias Beckett ability? I don't think so. I don't know. He might not have moved anything. It looks like he might have. I don't know. We were actually, yeah. We, well, you we said it. excited about didn't even pay attention you to said it in the it's beginning. Debris, it moves? I think it moves either. Oh, okay. Debris or, or I, I, don't, I don't think he moved anything, but mm -hmm. yeah, we talked about it and then we didn't pay I attention. Know. It's even worse if he didn't even do it after us getting all excited about it. Stream, do you, maybe you guys can keep us uh, honest here. Do you know if he moved in the beginning? And if sure. They can't hear you. Oh, stream can't hear us? Yeah. The stream's down for the moment. So. Oh, okay. Oh. It's still recording. It's still recording. <clears throat> Will go out Retroactively, when they hear this, they'll say, oh, I knew it happened or not. Yeah, that's because yep. I don't know what they're talking about. So I guess then for me, it looks like John's taking the middle lane. Yeah, I don't see why he would not. It's a nice, nice path there. Now, I am not familiar with some of these dials so okay. calling moves is uh not going to be easy but um so Uncar Platt still has the ability to move backwards correct yes correct backwards and uh backwards straight and backwards one banks right and then um the uh the hawk has gotten a uh, improved dial the hawk overall is just been one of the most improved ships it got <laughs> yeah. as you can see it got um it got the engine upgrade, uh, which is a ga it has a red boost. So engine upgrade in this edition of the game now turns, turns red Turns red to white. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And you wouldn't think that'd be huge, but to have a boost on a hawk is massive. Uh, and then the moldy crawl title is is insane. It's definitely definitely feels like worth its twelve points. It's um, now in your primary arc, you gain an additional attack die. Very so, powerful. So no, the hawk has a four attack die range. Work. <laughs> you mean it's got better than one Sorry, shot five. at the front? I think it's five. Because it's three on the board. It's three on the dial now. It's, it's actually been upgraded to three. Oh, no, sorry. The multi crawl title adds one attack die. So, yeah, four range one. Uh, so the only restriction that we have is across your list, you can't repeat anything. So you can't have uh, Vader crew in one list and then Vader uh, Vader. Right. Advance on the right. Unique other. is unique across all your lists. You got it. And that's that's a standard in our list, in our in our tournament format, in our league format. You can never that's repeat right. pilots or name things in, our, in any of our lists. That's how we run our... We our encourage team. variety. Absolutely. That's the P for prototype. Prototype. We like to see prototype lists and interesting stuff. We might just be having to step away for a moment and um, come back again. Ah! Welcome back, everyone. We had a little bit of issue with our internet service provider, but yeah. it looks like we've got it sorted out here. Moose might have walked into a phone cord or something like that. That's how it works up here, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, especially in the city. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so, so I'm not 100% sure what's happened since we left, but it doesn't look like we missed much. No, it looks like we missed some positioning. We're seeing it, we're seeing how the new barrel roll works. So John's trying to barrel. So what you do on the on what you would have tried to do on the uh, medium base ones is you you still line up the um, template the way you used to on the big bases, the the vertical way. Right. Uh, but it, it connects to the midpoint of the ship, and then you can slide it to the hash marks. So you actually get a little bit different. Like a bit further movement on the medium base, but so we saw that was a failed barrel roll, right? Correct. So yes. So that means he doesn't get to choose to do another action. Correct. In one point, in, sorry, in two point now, if you choose the action, you can't complete it. You've lost your action. You're not forced to do an incomplete barrel roll, but you do not get a chance to get your action. Kyle decided to tuck Sabine in behind that asteroid. So now that I think he's deciding whether or not he wants to use Luke's uh, supernatural reflexes to barrel roll out to the right Trying of that. Trying to determine if he's going to run that over. Yeah, or if he wants to sit where he is. It depends on what he's got programmed. He'll make that decision. He might not need to if he's got the straight maneuver. Pro I think if he's got a straight maneuver programmed, he can three straight right past that asteroid um, and not have to do anything with yeah, these. It's hard to see where the nubs are from where we're sitting. That's true. However, he might want to get around the other side of that asteroid. 
and then come up the side of John's block and fire a proton torpedo into somebody's flank. Yeah, I don't know. And you can see that uh, John's also running the new version of um, the Moldy Crow title, where you can now only stack two focus tokens. So the reason why he has three is when we were off air, he would have taken the focus Stacked action. Two. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can only ever hold on to two, but you can have the third. Right. So you are in the you are allowed to measure all available options and see what they look like. But oh, that's good. You have to pick one of the three resting positions, right in the middle, up away at the front of the ship, or at the back of the ship. Those are the only three options you have available to you now with the barrel roll. And I'm not sure uh, he probably used supernatural reflexes to do that, so he would be down one for his token. Force has been a really interesting addition to the game. Yeah, and also the charges on things. I, mm -hmm. I think I like the the new rechargeable parts they've added to the game. Yeah, I was initially grumbly only because it was a lot more things to track, but it is a <laughs> good way of tracking things because now there's an accountability for it all. It's just we all just need a little bit of time to get used to it. So it looks like uh, Kyle wants to be able to fire Luke's uh, proton torpedo on this round. Um, and you might think it's a bit overzealous to throw Luke into the fray like that, but again, his ability is so good. Yeah, right. Every single time you attack him, he's gonna have a, a mod on all of his defensive rolls, and it almost makes you not want to shoot him. But then again, the only way you can do damage on Luke is to fire at him four different times. Yeah, that's true. And these X wings, man. Yeah, because he doesn't want to lose that MOV by taking one damage on Luke yeah, that we totally talked about. You. Makes sense to run. Yeah. Get that target lock off that freaking board, Kyle. Get that crap out of here. Replace it with a War of 1812 target lock. Yeah, there it is. Face punch. From Wedge. Yeah, one of eight die, three die. You take focus. Or target. Did you take a target lock? Or do you boost? Boost into range one? No, I don't know what you do. Takes the target, Takes lock. target lock. He wants maximum damage, yeah. doesn't he's care about lost, defense. He's already lost half points on wedge. He's not going to lose wedge, so he might as well. Um, That's a pretty good roll. Yeah. Should have taken the focus. Yeah. <laughs> you never know that, though. No, you never know. Oh. Oh, oh that was Proton. Proton Torpedo. Wow. Two and a crit. That does it, right? Yeah. I didn't realize he still had a proton torpedo left. That's what the little charge symbol up there means. That's true. You know I always forget that proton torpedoes have two charges? Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's the end of the round. Yeah, Thank you for tuning in. I guess it's not really live, so we don't have to ask them to come back. We're but hopefully... Now. We just got live again. All right, we're live again. We're live right at the end.